well, we didn't know each other till Medora, and then yeah. even then, it was just one of those. Uh, we just had maybe an hour, uh, forty five minutes. Yes, but I got introduced hour. to your show and I started listening. Oh, thank you. Since so, oh, well, it's so nice to hear. It, it's, even me if even if you haven't seen me, I've been listening to you. So. Oh no, no, I've been listening to you too. Yeah, I've been yeah. I've been aware. I I, I listened to Found um, and um, yeah, it's 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 a great great. It just works really well as a podcast, you know, concept. Mm-hmm. I think you know, just it just. And you've also been a contributor to This American Life, haven't yep. you? Yeah, for that, since two thousand one. See, really? Yeah, and you're still. Since two thousand and one, yeah, so yeah. I, haven't done, I haven't done a piece for a couple of years with them, but I, okay. I mean, yeah, well, I will, I will, yeah, 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 I will, and um, I, I learned so. I mean, my mentors at This American Life were yeah. Ira, of course, but also the the producers I worked with at the time were Alex Bloomberg. Now, oh my gosh, started yeah, Gimlet like Media, yeah, and 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 Julie Snyder, who started Serial. Yes, right. So, so you feel feel free to introduce them to Film Wax since it's it, one of your favorite podcasts. Uh, well, <laughs> and, yeah, I, and in fact, I I will. But also, <laughs> it's funny to think about those guys because yeah, the first rough cut of Seventeen Blocks was in two thousand two. I had a rough cut screening, and I invited Alex and Julie, and they came and get you know wow. like watched an early cut. Yeah, seven, seventeen years ago. Oh wow! And uh, that is, gave feedback to like a two hour plus. They must have had a lot cut. of feedback. Uh, well, they they did. It was it was. I mean. It was, over, it was over two hours, and it was just, you know, the first two years of filming. Right. So, um, I mean, look, there's so much footage. We could have made a full feature doc based on just the footage from the first couple of years. But sure. But that being said, uh, it, there's. Well, look at the more, seven up more films. Special. Yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. you, you, I guess, I guess somebody like uh, Michael Apted could have chosen to continue making Hollywood movies every so or a few mm-hmm. years and in mm-hmm. the meantime do this other project this other passion project yeah. and, and, and then at the end of it just sort of like grab the best hundred minutes of, of 56 years of, of yeah I was thinking about right he's compressed day. yeah five yeah. decades and but this idea. And, that, and that series is among my inspirations for this project is it yeah because um, at a certain point I realized okay t- you know Hoop, Hoop Dreams travels, you know, five years. Right. Um, the Seven Up series, you know, fifty, and and I caught that sweet spot of twenty, <laughs> twenty years. But I can say that I mean I have been brought to tears in a number of those Seven Up movies, mm-hmm, films, installments, and um, I mean some there's some moments that are magic, you know. So and just seeing people's faces change and age over time, yeah. it's so uh, there's some magic to that, yeah. Oh yeah, and just those moments where you know when you're young and you have aspirations and uh, dreams, and just to see where people fall in terms of the disappointments, as well as making peace with things mm-hmm. as life has played out. Totally, uh, and in totally. some cases celebrating because right. you know, like realizing, oh my god, I have this beautiful family or whatever. And those they're they're all it's all there in those films. That's the beauty. of You that. see the change that people like people do go through monumental change in their lifetimes, and like I remember one seven up character uh, from that film series um at one point he's like homeless and and yep. th- and then he had he, mental illness yeah yeah right? yeah and then he kind of gets himself together and like yeah. then he's like a like a city councilman you know in the yeah. next seven years later as and so in our film in, in 17 blocks like i feel like our characters and our, our subjects um Denise and Smurf and Cheryl, you know, they, the they've, got, they've gone through, yeah, the Sanford family, they, they've gone through, um, you know, transforma- transformations themselves over the 20 years we've been filming together. Right. Oh, absolutely. And I was thinking earlier also, like, what kind of things that we could get specific about mm-hmm. or touch upon without giving too much away. Yeah, you know? sure. So we're leaning on you a little bit for that. But, okay, sure, but, that's but, fair. You know, but yeah. I, I mean, obviously there's... I a mean, fair... I think we can talk about any anything in the story, maybe just without too, being too specific about, mm-hmm. you know, who, which of these things has been yes. experienced by, you know. Right, yeah. But... Um, well, let's let's set it up a little bit, too. And sure. by the way, I want to mention, we should do... Um, I think we should do the uh, the next round of the 7 Up box set that comes out, because I do mm-hmm. have one of them, uh, mm-hmm. is we should do the audio commentary on the entire... Yeah, entire s- so, series of those. My know. friend knows Michael <laughs> Apted. I've never met him, oh, but I did. I, you did. He did the podcast. Yeah, really. Yeah, that's with awesome. the last with the last one, fifty six. Amazing. So it's coming well, up. well, I think we should talk to your 
Big Mike and, and, and just let <laughs> yeah. him know like, hey, you know, you're a busy guy. Like you're probably working on the next seven year installment, you know, but but Adam and I got this. We got you. We're just going to do the audio yeah. commentary for you. Yeah. No, just don't worry. Relax. <laughs> chill out. But, can I can but, I also set up why my voice is so raspy? Yeah. Um, Tribeca Film Festival has been wonderful. Sure, yes. And um, yeah, just 13 of the film subjects were here for, with me from D.C., wow. as well as my wife and 10-month-old son and um, and and many, many members of the film crew. Um, uh, and so um, it's just been, uh, uh, you know, like talking a lot and, and at uh, some, I lost my voice halfway along the way. I still have, I still have like two thirds of it, but anyways, you do. I don't always sound, sound like this. It's sounding good in the headphones. Good, good. Yeah, it is. It has character, David. Good, good. It does sound a little more, yeah, it sounds more seasoned than, than, uh, <laughs> yeah. than I normally, I don't like, uh, like, I like. The this American Life stories I've done, I just don't always like hearing my voice on the stories. I understand. I wish I sound a little tougher. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, uh, uh, you'll get now. I do. That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Now yeah. you sound like us. Maybe uh, you know, I don't know, uh, somebody out of one of the uh, gang- well, gangster movies. Yeah, a little bit more. Just say C at the end of most of your senses. Yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> yeah. You know? uh, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna do, okay, should I set up the film? Well, yeah, I just want to mention, yeah. you were also, one other thing, and then we're going to get into 17 Blocks, Yeah, and, and that is that you and Andrew Cohen, mm-hmm. who I know had a falling out, and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just riffing now. Making yeah, that, that's yeah, yeah. totally fiction. Yeah, we've been texting all but, day, all day um, today. It, but, uh, was he there? I didn't uh, see No, it. no, okay. he's, he's actually, it's pretty exciting, but he's in the Chicago area okay. for his first narrative feature, um, oh. which um, is... I think I can say all this stuff. Yeah, uh, it's starring Richard Jenkins. Um, and, yeah, and uh, a great cast. Um, I'm so am- glad am- you among got many that. others. Yeah, it's a beautiful story yeah. that, that he yeah, he wrote. Um, that's dear to his heart. And um, and so like you know we always talk about narrative directing, and I'm really glad he's flexing his. Uh, the, yeah. And well, Marshall Curry just did it at your fest at the Tribeca Film Festival, and I was very, very impressed with how that turned out. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, I just Andrew came from that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was I thought he did a great job. He Me just too. did the podcast for my coverage. And, great. Um, so, so Andrew came on, you know, with Night School, which I thought was a really mm-hmm. powerful mm-hmm. documentary, and uh, yes. un- unfortunately, I felt it was got lost. I, I don't think oscilloscope. Mm-hmm. Um, knew how to handle it quite yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's that's okay. Yeah, I, it was on Netflix for a while as well. And yeah. I, I mean, I know it had it has its fans for sure. It's a it's a gorgeous movie. And yeah. you shared a cinematographer. To yeah, Zach not, Shields. Saw, we yeah. met him at the while we were working on Medora. Okay. The, the very end, we just needed sort of some B roll shots of like the village of Medora, and and uh, Zach Shields Zach was Shields. a local guy in from Indiana. Oh, okay. And. Uh, he was recommended to us. He went out and the footage we were seeing was like incredible. We were like, if only, cause me and Andrew shot a lot of Medora, but we're not really trained right. in that way. And we also had a, uh, Rachel Counts who is, who is a great cinematographer, but, but we just wished we had had Zach Shields with us, you know, the whole time. And, and, uh, and so immediately Andrew started working with Zach on night school. And then, you know, as I started to see how that footage looked, I was like really jealous so kind of uh recruited zach to this project and not only did he shoot beautifully but you know i'd had this connection with the sanford families they they explained that they adopted me 15 years ago but but um they're friendly but zach also just has a way of getting in there with people and like it took him like two weeks to build the kind of rapport that i i built over 15 years he's such a he's such a nice guy well he paved the way yeah 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 definitely um but but he he shot some really beautiful footage for this film you know of course this film was also shot by a nine-year-old well, much of it emmanuel durant yeah. um who is the um, his, one of the his one brother of the, and sister the one of the sanford sons mm-hmm. yeah um his his brother and sister me um the camera got passed around a lot and um but zach zach brought some beautiful work to the end of it yeah the Sanfords, you've mentioned already their mm-hmm. name. Uh, they they are a uh, a family who live in uh, Washington D.C. The, the 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 title seventeen blocks yeah. comes from the, the the number of blocks they live from the the White House. Correct? Yeah, the U.S. Capitol building. The yep. Capitol building. Yep. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. So I'll leave that We're, mistake in. That's uh, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I I mean, yeah, it's but, uh, Southeast D.C. is where I met them, and yeah, it's just straight out Pennsylvania Avenue. You could literally walk into the 
uh, the corner, and you could look up and you, you could see down there in the Capitol building. I yeah. thought at one point I saw it. Like yeah, it may distance. be in a couple of shots. It yeah. may be. I'm so glad that I was saw it at the you know at the Tribeca Film Festival on the big screen. I'm so glad you sent me that email and prompted yeah, me because I knew you had the film there, but yeah. I never. I just sometimes end up seeing so little. So I'm yeah, no, really, no, no. I was really happy that yeah. you saw the premiere, and because after 20 years of filming w- with this family and right. and and building this film, like the premiere was a special night for all of us, and and so there was a lot of emotion flowing. Mm. I was sitting next to Cheryl Sanford, who yes, now I've, no, I've known yes. and been working with on this since 1999, and and. Uh, yeah, it was it was intense, and it's still, I'm still kind of unpacking it. I bet I yeah. bet some of this is going to happen after you've yeah, returned get yeah, and gotten yeah. home and have a chance to yeah, yeah. Re- sort of decompress. But yeah. you were sitting there, and Doug Block was on your uh, flanking yeah. you, and yeah. I actually was sitting to Doug's right. Okay, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't wanna, see you there. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I but, didn't want to bother you. So but I, uh, yeah, so you were. We were t- oh. I'd, I could see from the pictures you you took of uh, of the Q and A. Yeah, where you must have been right next to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah, and it was intense for the audience because we, the the film Seventeen Blocks is a really intimate story. I mean, you mm-hmm. can't get really more intimate than that. Uh, yeah. And so by the end of it, and then the family's there. We're experiencing, we're understanding, we're empathizing to some degree mm-hmm. with Davy Rothbart because mm-hmm. we can only imagine what this must be like for you, for the family, to finally see this film in mm-hmm. front of a. Oh, you know, an audience, you mm-hmm. know, it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. And they, I'm so happy they had such a great experience here. Um, yeah. They, you know, they've been through a lot in the last 20 years. They've been through the worst things you can go through as a parent or, or brother or sister. As a, the, yeah, losing, uh, losing people in your life, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and yet they've, you know, they're awe inspiring they're within their resilience mm-hmm. and their courage and their um their love for one another you know and so for them to feel the embrace of an audience you know i i, I expected it i hoped for it but to just see people flowing out of the theater and like the strangers like coming up to hug them and talk to them and and share their own stories with them you know it was uh, it was moving it was as moving as the film was on the screen like it was meaningful for them to, you know, be celebrated for what they've been through and, and overcome. Uh, yeah, it, it was a humbling experience. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was, it was, it was powerful. And, you know, it was, it was, we had fun too this week. Like, mm. you know, we took all, when the, when the Medora kids, me and Andrew's earlier film, like w- the kids came from rural Indiana and we, brought them to New York City for the release around the time we first met you and uh, I remember we took the kids to the top of the Empire State Building and they really loved that coming from a town of 400 people Medora to look out across Manhattan it was a trip to say the least but so I was talking to them last week the, the, I'm so close with the kids in Medora and and uh, Dylan he said uh, he was like so hard, like the family he knows I've been working on this for a really long time and he's excited he hasn't seen the, this film yet 17 blocks but he he said are you gonna take him to the empire state building i was like yeah, yeah I, I have to that's a great idea a so we, we went up there a few days ago and uh and that was special for them too their first time in new york and you know dc f- for being a big city there's like an ordinance that no building can be taller than the u.s capitol building so that's like six stories you know and so there's no skyline and so does that pertain to monuments? <laughs> I um, I, well, the, no, I think all the monuments are. Are they still smaller? The, yeah, okay, I, yeah. You know, you always think the link, even though. Well, actually, okay, no, no, the Washington, sorry, the, the Washington, Washington, Washington Monument. Monument. The Washington believe. Monument is the tallest. the tallest. And maybe that's what the rule is, nothing can be taller than that. But they built that. it in a ditch. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Uh, you, you know, um, in, in yeah. outside D.C., the, you know, Arlington and, you know, those have taller buildings, but nothing in D.C. Right. And, and so uh, it, it was, it was it was a special week having having everybody here and right. You know, and I mean, it, that's the nice thing. At least also Washington D.C. is close enough to New York where you could you. We it was possible up. for the production to bring everybody. Exactly, exactly. Know? We we were able to. Me and Zach actually each just drove a van, and and plus we had a few other friends, uh-huh. um, from the, the camping trips that me and the family run every year, Washington to Washington, um, for kids from their neighborhood in D.C. Mm-hmm. and so. Some of those trip leaders came, 
me and Zach drove and we had two packed vans and uh, it, it was awesome. Thanks to Beachside Films too for, you know, supporting the trip and knowing how important it would be to get as many of the family members up here as we could. Yeah. 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 I mean, especially for the, the world premiere. Yeah. yeah. The Sanfords uh, took you in, you know, and I know it took quite a while probably to build the level of trust that you did. But by that point, though, the son that you mentioned who was already shooting mm-hmm. footage, had he started before you arrived? Or Actually, did you no. give him the camera? I gave him the camera. Okay, yeah, you gave him a Emmanuel. Um, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah, I just met, you know, in 1999. I was, like, fresh out of college, a couple years out of college. and. Mm-hmm trying to figure life out in your early 20s and moved to D.C. to sleep on my brother's, uh, uh, actually my friend's couch. My friend was working on Capitol Hill. He was like an intern for some congressman. Right. Um, and you know, he lived like nine blocks behind the Capitol. Thirteen blocks behind the Capitol is a basketball court um, where I used to play every day. And then the family lived uh, four blocks beyond that, 17th and Kentucky Avenue Southeast. And uh, I befriended this teenager named Smurf. We used to, you know, hoop every day and kind of hit it off. And, and his brother, Emmanuel, was always kind of hanging around the edges of the court, like watching Younger us. Younger brother, right? Yeah, yeah, little brother. He was nine years old. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I, I had just bought a video camera, like a Sony Hi8 with little, you know, tapes, cassette tapes. Because mm-hmm. I wanted, I was interested in filmmaking and wanted to learn how to use a camera. And I think at one day when Emmanuel was like bummed that we wouldn't let him ba- play basketball with us. I think I gave him, handed him the camera and said, why don't you, you know, mess around with this, you know? And uh, it kept him occupied and he quickly grew like really interested in it. And, uh, you know, I started lending the camera to him overnight and on weekends. And as I can, you know, started to also get to know the rest of his family, his mom, Cheryl, and his sister, Denise. And Emmanuel just had a very poetic eye, you know, like, I would watch the footage that he shot and it was, it was really beautiful. It would be, he, he would, and, and so then he and I started walking around the neighborhood and just, we'd interview people on the street. There was no plan. You know, it was just, right, right, like, it was just like yeah. two people enjoying a video camera and learning how to use it. And, and we, he would interview me, I would interview him mm-hmm. and we were just talking about life, but also bonding, you know, and, and, uh, right. Trust building trust. Yeah. 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 I yeah. That, and know, I, and, and, time. Yeah, and and but it it took sort of remarkably little time because the family is just so such friendly and welcoming people. So right, you know, like and I and I was I you know I had no family really close by. I was maybe f- feeling a little lost, like you might if in the first couple of years after college and huh. and um and they they sort of that Cheryl likes to say they adopted me, which is kind of how it felt because all of a sudden I had a place to go every day, people to eat dinner with, and. You know, it was just like, um, it became, the family became a very big part of my life, um, it, while I was living in sure, DC. Sure. And, uh, yeah, so filming was just one among many, you know, we also played basketball together. We right. hung out and did other things, but, but we also filmed a lot and it was just kind of a fun thing. And even after I left DC, um, we kept, every time I came back, we would hang out, maybe film a little bit more. Um, and, and the family was struggling, you know. It's a it's a very rough part of DC, especially in 1999. It was known as honestly one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the country, and you know, a, a neighborhood with a lot of drugs and a lot of violence, and um, and even you know they, they were they were surrounded by that and participating in it. You right. Know? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. The, the drugs are like a uh, the, the the draw of selling drugs is very prevalent mm-hmm. and it's there's a lot of probably even pressure even though it's 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 one way to make money there's not a whole lot of options out there especially so, yes and especially in other parts of the city where they had moved over the years like like um in certain places it really is yeah. like a, a desert in terms of like yes like it, you you can be the m- most well-intentioned person that wants to um find a job yeah yeah Yeah, yeah. and it's like and it's going to be a like an hour and a half commute to you know just to go to walmart you know or whatever it's 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 the opportunity is not there i understand and and which is especially you know not to be too um unsubtle but it's just like you know it is 17 blocks behind the u.s capitol building you know you see the congressman walking in and out of the building like driving up into the building like they drive through these neighborhoods, you know, to get to work 
And so there's something you, you can't help but feel the irony of it when you see uh, a neighborhood that's been forgotten, you know. Yeah, I was going to say is that in considering there's 17 blocks that separate the the capital from the Sanford family at the mm-hmm. same time, and I know they moved around, but that mm-hmm. that that they may as well have been on opposite sides of the world. Yeah, I mean, very for all very, it matter, yeah, for all their totally. interaction of their totally. those two it's, communities that were, you know, to be to, for there to be that much of a gulf in terms of yeah, um, what's happening in in neighborhoods that are really geographically so close together yes i met this man named Sai. he was at the same screening as you at the premiere he, he he's one of the heads of the national urban league and he's very interested in like as he called it geospatial awareness mm-hmm. and just and yeah. just mapping and right and so the fact that you know he said the title of the movie 17 blocks is about geography you know right and, and you and yeah just so it's majora True, but true. this is a yeah. bit more uh, like sort of urban planning, yeah, yeah. and also and makes you question, mm-hmm. yeah, what what it, seventeen block, yeah. you know, so it kind of engages you this title, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a way that uh, that I enjoy. Yeah. I was going to say also as you developed as a as a as a storyteller, mm-hmm. because uh, you're filmmaking, podcasting, uh, et cetera, you couldn't have chosen a better family, even though you didn't sound like you chose it, but it. it the, the characters and uh, yeah. these are human beings, but yeah. I'm going to call them characters for the sake of the movie story. Yeah, yeah. Is you have uh, the older sister who is again her Denise. name is Denise, yeah. who is a bit of a uh, funny, smart, yeah, you know, type, uh, very outgoing. Yeah. Then you have the younger brother who is a book quiet, yeah, ch- internal, Sh- shy, shy, yeah, I mean, still like a bubbly a straight, kid, but yeah, straight though, or, like yes, not, yeah. yeah. And then the brother who is the uh, the kind of the player slat I mean mm-hmm. he, you know early on we see yeah. he's literally writing a list of girls I beeped yeah, yeah girls I <laughs> I mean and some of us do that it may be aspirational Susan, uh, Susan Argan I know has a similar list but yeah, yeah. she doesn't go on to, to in front of a camera to show people that true you know? true that's uh, my next documentary <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll edit that out Susan but uh, I I yeah like I definitely think that. So um, you had these characters, right? Right. And yeah, then, then yeah. tying them all together, the, the salt of the earth, the mother, uh, Cheryl. Cheryl, I remember that. But mm-hmm. uh, Cheryl, who brings brings everybody together, provides the the the, the, the sort of the core of the family. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, it's, with their own it, set of conflicts and troubles, but yeah, which is in a way the thread mm-hmm. thread through the story. Mm-hmm. How is she gonna, you know, survive? How is she gonna? Yeah. She, you know, she's she's someone who grew up actually in a little bit of a nicer part of DC, uh, what she calls right. lower middle class. You know, her dad was a civil servant. Um, I think he was like a secretary at like one of the U.S. Uh, government buildings, and uh, she. They they had her going to private schools, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. and then as she reveals in the movie, you know, she went through some extremely difficult things in her teenage years, and those kind of set her on a new course, and she fell into substance abuse and and kind of had been on a downward spiral um, while still being super engaging and resourceful and finding a way to keep her family afloat, but but. Um, but kind of just started her on a dark path, and uh, and her three kids they they bounced around from place to place. Actually, when I met them, they they had been essentially homeless for about a year until just weeks before I met them. Uh, Cheryl, in her resourcefulness, met a family who who like uh, an old woman who was quite sick and needed like full time caretaking. So Cheryl moved into the house. Um, to take care of the woman, a lot, you know, she was allowed to move her three children in with Amazing. with her um, in exchange for full time caretaking. Right. Well, that woman had quickly gotten too sick to even be at home, and was at a nursing home. So now they had this place to themselves. They knew it would be quite temporary because this woman was either gonna was you know she wasn't gonna live much longer. At which point the family wasn't you know her family was gonna kick them out. So it was a very tenuous time actually those first few months. I haven't really thought about that but um 
you know, they were they were luxuriating and having the most space that they'd had in a long time, but they were also... Knew that the days were numbered. Yes. That the, the clock was ticking. Exactly. Anyway, right? And yes, they didn't know course. where they would live next, and they mm-hmm. had struggled in the years after that. You we, know? Can, we can also, if it rings again, honey, don't, I mean, you know, we can, I can edit, so don't... Yeah. It's not, you know... Yeah, I like the, I like the way your show runs where it's like, you know, it's, it's not... about the conversation. I'm yeah, not too yeah, caught up in it. I mean, I, I obviously, most of my... But it's organic. Shows I do. And, uh, yeah, I try to keep it loose and yeah. organic. Uh, that's where the magic is, Davey. I, well, I'll, no, I'll, you just stick with me and you'll, you'll see. I, I'd rather <laughs> paint a picture of like people, two yeah. people talking in a live room where things are unfolding than like... Mm-hmm. Um, in the uh, know, uh, hermetically sealed uh, studio. Yeah, right? yeah. But, um, I, I, I'd still like the option of both. True. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> you know? true. That's true. Because, you know... When you're uh, talking to Mike Laptead, you know, give me, but, give, uh, give him, he expects a studio. <laughs> um, Love you, Big Mike. <laughs> Cheryl, I just wondered. She just also. I mean, there's a camera. I mean, where she's divulging. She's so vulnerable and open and honest. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. the film is so raw and so intimate mm-hmm. because partly because it was filmed by much of it by the family themselves yeah. and the people were not shy around their family when they were someone else, a brother or sister yes. was holding the camera. Yes. But also because, um, you know, Cheryl and the family, this is a movie we made together. Jen to Shara, who edited, edited it, uh-huh. me, Zach who shot a lot of it. We made it together with the family. And, and that includes like what, what trying to figure out what the story should be, you know? And yes. And, and Cheryl sometimes said like one time she said to us, you know, you've been filming, we've been all fil- filming together for so long. I've talked to you about my struggles with addiction. But she said, I don't think you've actually ever filmed me like using drugs. And she was like, it's, it's, I, I've, I see it. I see my fellow friends and addicts like use drugs. It's ugly. She's like, you should probably film it. You should film like, and you should film me doing it. And I mean like now, cause I'm about to use. Was, yeah, let's, let's do it. But the, you know, there's a reason mm-hmm. There's a reason that things are as as raw and sort of, you know, I guess in your face and as as they are is because, you know, I think Cheryl, I, I don't know, I, I would just say she she saw the value of, of showing things for how they really are. And she was completely unflinching in terms of what she was willing to, to share of herself. And, and, and the rest of her family is the same way, you know. It just runs against somebody who's so, uh, oh, oh, in a way, willing to confront the truth, no matter how ugly it may appear. Mm-hmm. You'd think, well, they really have a fighting chance because mm-hmm. they're not so sealed off and defensive and all these other things. It seems like she was always willing, maybe just postponing, dealing with the pain issue that she, mm-hmm. you know, because it's like she seemed like so many people are just so shut down and yeah. she's not. Yeah. She doesn't come across that way in the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they, all the characters have this type of arc in the, in the film, you know, they yeah. all have, and you're able to identify that, which is another reason why the film works because you see, you found Denise, Denise's arc where she's, you know, has an opportunity to, to um, uh, upward become somewhat more yeah. upwardly mobile, I guess, yeah. when she yeah. has a, a professional opportunity and, and, um, and for, for Smurf as well. You know, who confronts a very difficult moment in his yeah, life, and yeah. was also able to, to uh, D- yeah, to find some salvation and some redemption. Yeah. And the amount of, I mean, the, the characters deal with so much guilt, and there's so much. Yeah, pain it's it's twenty years do. of highs and lows, Jesus. and and yeah. and pain and sorrow, and 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 laughter and yeah. joy and and love and love and love. Yeah, there's a lot and, of love. And, and Jen. Tashera, our wonderful editor, who just won the big best editing award. Yes, here I meant Tribeca. to bring that up. I heard. Yeah, the, very the, proud of I her. I was trying to get there last night, and then uh, she is so devoted to this project and to the family. Um, for years, diving into this, you know, a thousand hours of footage, and mm-hmm. but Jen always calls it a love story, and I think that's you know she says it's a, a, a love story between a family, you know, um, who and the most, filmmaker named Davey Ruff. Well, yes, <laughs> and 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 yeah. and and the f- amount of love the family has shown me over the years has been incredible, and I consider them my own family. And they taught you know me and Denise, our brother and sister, on Facebook, and you know it's remarkable that they've mostly lived under one roof. You know, so I met them when it was a mom and her three kids who were mm-hmm. like nine, twelve, and fifteen. They were about twenty years later, and you know 
the, her kids' kids also live. They, you know, they all have shared, even as as they moved around from apartment to apartment and tried to keep a roof over their heads. They they've always stuck together, and so that's that's powerful. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think people will really connect with it um, on a number of levels. Quick question is one is. Uh, did you happen to have a friends and family screening in DC prior to kind of give them a so they because I mean sure. Smurf in particular at the yeah. Q and A looked like he was very had a very intense yeah moment I mean or experience again and, and the Q and A is can be very jarring yeah I can imagine um, you know having just watched that and then you're supposed to go up yeah and, but I thought I thought Smurf uh, spoke quite eloquently at the at the Q and A um, yeah about how real more recently or um, I he didn't I, talk I, at the first one at the premiere I don't oh, think okay. unless I'm mistaken. I I honestly can't remember the week's okay. been upset to blur, but but at some of the screenings he's okay. Yeah, he's and uh, well, been, he's, he's, I think he's let some of it's he's got getting more comfortable, you know, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Because it, you know it is to see this story, such a personal story on screen in front of a big audience. Like, yeah, that's right. That's this is a first. Just that, yeah, that's that people are crazy. Seeing, yeah, I uh, a maybe month, like a, month, a month ago we went to DC, sorry. Jen and I, as well as uh, our producers Alex Turtletop and Michael Clark, and and we shared the. We started the film with Denise Smurf and Cheryl, and um, and I, I told Denise like I gave her a sense. I was like, "There's," because I wanted to know if she wanted to share it with her children or not. But she hadn't seen it, so she, you know, right. she said, "Oh no," she said, "I want Justin, her son, to see it. He, he's a big part of the movie." That's right. And right. Uh, I almost forgot. And, he and, was there. and yeah, and I, so I warned her. Like I was like, "Do you remember when we filmed this stuff?" Right. And we talked, and we talked about this being in the movie and, and a lot of the stuff over the years the stuff that the family, you know, ha- has said like, please put the scene in the movie as upsetting as it might be because it's an important piece of the story, you know? So I was like, Denise, you, you know, all the stuff's in there. She was like, no, it's just, I mean, Justin, he's been around this his whole life. So like he, you know, he should see it. So, so we shared it with the whole family and they, you know, there was a lot of tears and a lot of laughter and, um, and you know some you could you might think that it would be like traumatic to watch a film that where some pretty traumatic events take place and you know about your own life mm-hmm. the thing is the the heartbreaks that they've experienced are ones that they don't forget about so it's like Yes, it's intense to see it on camera, but it's but, not like it's buried. But yeah, it's not you know it's right. stuff they nope. deal they no, are deal with and and think about and yeah. talk about every day. Yeah. So yeah. so uh, yeah. So uh, um, but 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 it, but it was it was special. I'm I mean yes. of course to share it with them for the first time and they all we all had a, shared a big hug afterwards and they just said you know we we can't wait to share our story with people because you know we think it can make a difference and and we Cheryl Cheryl always said I you know people should know what it feels like to walk in my shoes, you know, somebody who's gone through all the things I've, I've gone through. And mm-hmm. she said, if, if I think we've done that, she said, you know, like, like I think someone could watch this movie and feel like they know, would, could, they're not but, alone, like they're walking in any of one of our yeah, shoes. Yeah, exactly. You know? No, this is a very, uh, yeah, I would say that, you know, the people are going to feel, Oh, I'm not, I, I, there are other people that are and they're willing to be open about it and not feel shame about certain things mm-hmm. that, yeah. that we shouldn't feel shame about. Absolutely. Um, well, I mean, the Sanford family may have been somewhat prepared or what have you, but I can tell you that I was listening to, uh, Susan, you were there, and I, I was listening to the audience mm-hmm. at the end of the movie, and I not only heard sniffles, which is not unusual yeah. for a good doc, but I heard people crying. I heard people, like, you know, visit audibly rather weeping. Yeah, uh, and then I realized, oh, it's me. I, just, <laughs> I was holding on. To, I was holding hands with uh, Doug Block on yeah, one side yeah. and Marshall Curry on the other. Wow. So I was in really good company, wow. flanked by those yeah. two guys. Right? Yeah. Can you imagine? Two but of my favorite what filmmakers. You, let's let's. But but let's, yeah, but yeah, there was a lot of emotion in that room, and yeah. every screening has been the same way. And I, and I feel the you know I've been feeling the emotion. I the other night I got really emotional. I could barely keep it together during the Q and A. Um, I think for the first time I was able to just sit there and watch the movie and experience it. Yeah. The first couple of screens. You. Uh, yeah. You're there for her, Cheryl and the family. Yeah. The yeah. I was, I was kind of just corralling them or I would say like what sort of like uh, holding of their hand. Yes. Yeah. yeah taking yeah. care of them a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And so sure. now they have just gone back to DC and, and I watched oh. it alone basically with a couple of friends okay. the other night and, and I got so emotional because I, I was just letting loose. Yeah. And, Good. and, um, but I, but I'm, I think it's, yeah, if people are 
just straight up, like you said, sobbing in the theater, <laughs> like, um, and and laughing at other moments of the film, <laughs> like you feel like you're touching them, and that like that that, that, that story that they're putting themselves in the Sanford family's shoes. Yeah, you know? the, 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 and, and the emotional heightened sense of people are because through the whole f- f- film they're feeling emotional. And so the those laugh the laughs and the tears are actually not at a particular sad moment. Yeah, it does true. Happen. That's a good point. It's actually just because it's there's a release, there's an, a kind of almost a catharsis at the end of the film that yeah. where she where they're talking about love and 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 the family. At the end of the day, it's a family held together by love, and yeah. and, and it's just like that's it's a powerful message. You're right. So you're I, right. I yeah. think, and and that's true. My friend mentioned that too. He he said that like. It was for him, and he was crying a lot the other day. Yeah. He said it was like happy tears because, like, the parts that he was crying at the most, he said, were like when you see, um, for example, Carmen, uh, who was Emmanuel's like fiance. Right. Yeah, she's um, she's talking French. about um, the love she has for other members of the family, and like, yep. she's just, part of the family. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just so, like you are. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's, true. It's, that, that's the way they are. And yeah. and so, um, yeah. Uh, Sometimes, and, and I'm the same way when I go see other docs, you know, like, um, what, there's some that just, I don't know, I, I saw that, that movie, The Sentence, at Sundance last year, mm-hmm. um, about a guy from Michigan who, uh, whose sister was uh, dating, it, living with a drug dealer that, and got got arrested. She ended up doing like 15 years just because she lived in the house with the guy. Wow. I and see sort that. of about, I don't know, just how much the family misses their daughter when she's locked, had, serving this, like, sort of draconian sentence. Anyways, it, it's, I'm the same way when I see a film and I just sort of feel like I am get teary like within the first five minutes and yes. till, till the yeah, end, yeah. end credits. No, yeah. me too. Uh, yeah, that's why I still love it. Davey Rothbard is the director of, uh, and co, or co, co filmmaker in this case of yeah. 17 Blocks, which is just had its world premiere at Tribeca Film Festival. I, I as a postscript, I do, well, thank you for doing the podcast. Of course, I'm, I'm a fan. It's a delight to, it's a delight I, to bring you back on. You, you, I, I sometimes I listen to your show, a film I haven't seen yet, and I and I like you know it gets me excited to see oh, the, see the film. That's Other great. times I wait purposefully until I've seen the film, and then it, it's always fascinating to hear some of the stories behind the making of the film. And um, anyways, yeah. so thank you for shining a light on films like this one. Oh yeah, no, it's a pleasure. I have a postscript kind of yeah, question for yeah, you, putting you on the spot here a little bit. Sure. Um, well, your family, you have also, but your biological family. Yeah. I don't know your circumstances, yeah. but uh, did, 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 yeah. What did they make? Did they well, no, see? Yeah. They, well, where my, have they my, been? My, and well, where do they make the film? Sure. Um, my my parents are in Michigan. They're not in great health. They weren't able to be here. Uh, my my brother was here for the premiere. Oh, nice. And um and my wife and uh, ten month old son were here too. So, actually. My wife knows the whole Stanford family really well. <laughs> Every year we do these camping trips. I was right. talking about. Yes, the, yeah. the Mention Washington, that, by the way. Wa- yeah, yeah. Washington please. to Washington. Um, the Stanford family. And I, you know, just saw that this is a neighborhood where kids don't have a lot of chances to get out of the neighborhood and just see what else is going on in the world. And since I love camping and hiking so much, and um, and the Stanfords wanted to find a way to give more opportunities to kids in their in their neighborhood we we started a program where we bring kids for a week-long camping and hiking trip every summer and started we've done it nine years you know the first year was like 10 kids from their block mm-hmm. last year we had 55 kids from Amazing. dc detroit and new orleans um we went to the george washington national forest in west virginia beautiful wow. lake and mountain area you can change and, a kid's life yeah we sw- canoeing swimming hiking yeah just um just hanging out in the woods, um, ghost stories, s'mores, you know, uh, it's, um, it's, it's an amazing yeah. experience. And yeah. Margaret, my wife has come as a trip leader the last few years. So she's gotten to know the whole Sanford family and, and they've gotten to know her, but we had our first kid last summer and, 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 uh, they had, none of them had met him. So he was here this past weekend and, um, uh, I'll show you this video when we're done recording sure, here sure. of, of the kids from the film, um, yeah. They're from the Sanford family. Who and, and look, these kids are like 10, 12 years old now, but yeah, I used to change their though. diapers. I remember right. when they were 10 months old. So to see them playing with my son, it brought it, it, it really brought it full circle. Yeah, and, yeah. No, I can and, see uh, that. And the family grows in that way. Yeah, well, because you know I mean? now you've been focused so much on this other family, and the, you know, now mm-hmm. they're connected to your family. Yeah, and, and I told, I told these kids yeah, that. Like, they, 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 they recognize that and they know that. Yeah. They, were, they were like, 
all that stuff you took us to do, we want to take your son to do. You yeah. know? That's magic, so, right? There's yeah. the magic again. So thank you so much, Davey. Oh, thank you, Adam. Yeah, thank you're you. welcome. My pleasure. Uh, and hopefully we'll, people listening will be able to see 17 blocks, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Soon we'll be able to make an announcement. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Thank you.